What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today in the shop we have my 2010 Audi S4, three liter supercharged, and in this video, we're gonna be replacing the PCV valve. PCV failure is pretty common on this three liter supercharged engine. Actually, PCV valve failure is pretty common on a lot of VWs and Audis. The PCV is buried underneath the supercharger on these three liters, and as you can see, this is quite the unit of a PCV valve. So two main ways these fail. One is going to be on the air side, meaning you have a loud whistle or a check engine light for like an air fuel mixture issue. The other, and the one we have, is actually coolant mixing. This channel right here has coolant flowing through it. Why? I don't know, but that's what happens. If we look at the holes here where the coolant flows, you can see a ton of micro cracks. This car has 216,000 miles on it, and this thing is space age polymer, or uh, more accurately, plastic. Now it can crack internally, it can warp between the air passage and the coolant passage, the gasket can leak, all kinds of different individual failures which leads ultimately to the same problem, coolant mixing into the oil. When we look at failure of the diaphragm here on the top, this is probably the most common PCV issue across the VW Audi line. So we're going to replace it and then I'm going to do a separate video and see if we can actually save the engine or if it's time to send this thing to the scrapyard. And big thanks to WD40 Brand for partnering with us on this video. Because we're working with a lot of old plastic, we need to be really careful. To help loosen up those fittings, I'm gonna be using WD40 Brand Specialist Silicone Spray. Not only are these plastic form-fitted hoses really expensive, they become really fragile over time. I chose Specialist Silicone because this is going to help us lubricate these really delicate parts, making them come off easier, and hopefully we can avoid having to replace some of those parts. Before spending a bunch of money and just throwing a PCV valve on this car, I really wanted to find a way to confirm 100% that the PCV valve was the problem. There's a couple of places on this engine where oil and coolant can mix. We have the oil cooler, we have the PCV valve, we have a head gasket, then we have something really bad like cracked hard engine parts or something like that. Direct testing of the PCV valve with no disassembly is almost impossible since it's buried under the supercharger. So first I pressurized the cooling system just to make 100% sure I had no external coolant leaks. Then with the cooling system still pressurized, I went ahead and removed the oil cooler. The theory here is if the oil cooler is leaking, I should have coolant coming out of these holes. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I didn't have anything coming out. Next I thought maybe I could pressurize and smoke test the PCV system and get bubbles coming back through the coolant. Unfortunately in this situation, I wasn't able to get anything there. Now we may be dealing with a failure that only has happens, say, when the engine is hot, we definitely don't want to run the engine with this oil coolant mixture in the crankcase. And in talking to my Audi buddies, nobody's really found a great way to make these tests. So if you know one, post it in the comments and let us know. This actually ends up being a super common failure and at 216,000 miles, probably worth replacing anyway. We're gonna go ahead and drain the coolant and you really wanna get as much coolant out as you possibly can. Taking one of the hoses off the oil cooler is an easy way to drain the coolant and you don't have to take the cooler all the way off like I did. You can just undo one of the hoses. Next, we'll remove the crankcase vent tubes from the valve covers. These can be a super pain in the butt to take off. A little bit of specialist silicone spray and a bunch of patients so you don't end up breaking them. There's also a newer style of these that can be pretty tricky too. If your car's super mild up, it may be worth replacing them. You also want to make sure you're really careful once you pull it out of the valve cover. If you just rip this hose backwards, you're really likely to break it. Next, let's go ahead and get our supercharger belt off. On the cars, the distance between the supercharger belt and the core support, super small. On the SUVs, you have a ton more room, but either way, we can get it out without taking the car's front end off. If you have a long wrench like this one here. Kind of stand on the passenger side. You can see the pulley. Slip this down. You take tension off the belt by pushing your wrench towards the driver's side. Then slip the belt off the supercharger. You can just kind of leave it down there. No need to take the belt all the way out. Next we'll take our intake out of the way. Hopefully you have a less janky intake than I do. Turns out this is from a Jetta, but it fit. So that's cool. Next we're gonna work towards getting our supercharger off. Now before you do anything, I recommend grab your phone, take some pictures, take some video of how all this stuff is routed back at the back on the driver's side and the passenger side. That way you can make sure you get it put back exactly how it goes. I'm gonna start by disconnecting some connectors. I'm actually gonna disconnect this guy here too. Probably not necessary, but that's all right. We'll get it out of our way. We'll get both of these connectors off on each side. There's these cover brackets on the driver's side and the passenger side. Two T25s hold each of those on. 
Not a bad idea to take some compressed air and just blow some of this junk off the top here. Whoa. All right, that was a weird power outage. Let's not let that slow us down and keep going. We're gonna remove these two coolant hoses. Go ahead and hit them with our silicone spray. Get these guys out of the way. These pipes here are plastic, so be careful not to let the spring clamp snap down on them. And if you need to give them a little jiggle, all good there. You wanna give yourself a little more flexibility with these coolant hoses. There's a bracket right there with a T30 in it that you can take off, or you probably can even get away with just loosening it, but that'll give you a little bit more room probably can also get this other one off too. That may not be something you need to take off. Might just make life a little easier. Next, we're gonna start getting all this stuff off to get our supercharger out. At the back side of here is a bunch of stuff. And we need to be kind of mindful of what we're taking off and how we're taking it off. Silicone spray is gonna be our friend here. So we wanna be careful. Also, another spot to go ahead and take a picture. Make sure you get everything routed back correctly. Start with the throttle valve. Now you might be able to look at this stuff and go, Charles, man, you don't have to take all that stuff off. You're, you're probably right. You might not have to, and that's okay. If you feel like you can leave it on and still get done what you need to get done, leave it on. I'm a fan of that. In fact, the more stuff you can leave together, the less likely you're gonna put something back together in the wrong spot. We'll go ahead and take this purge valve fitting off. Get this connector off. That freed that up nicely. Now, for the changeover solenoids and all these vacuum lines, if you want to mark them, I actually think that's a pretty good idea. The center one is a lighter color, so that'll be pretty easy to tell where it goes. Usually with stuff like this, they have a pretty good memory, and it does a good job of going back where it's supposed to. So I'm going to leave the bracket and the solenoids on the supercharger, which means i got to pull the vacuum lines off. And then these three are kind of all in an array bracket, so... That should kind of only go one way. If you're worried about it, you can maybe disconnect it here and leave these on. But that I think is gonna go back together kind of only one way. Underneath this bracket full of solenoids, there's actually two connectors you're gonna wanna disconnect. All right, we should be free and clear on the backside. Also, you'll probably have this little guy right here on like the stock intake, but mine doesn't have that. So be mindful of this hose as well. Now we'll go ahead and take the six 13 millimeter nuts that actually holds the supercharger on to our engine. Go ahead and give everything one more good look over. Make sure up front you have everything removed. You can take a pry bar and just gently kind of nudge it. Same thing on the other side. Kind of free it up a bit. If you have a friend nearby, now's a good time to get that friend. If you're friendless, you're gonna have to lift it up yourself. It, it's kind of heavy. Oh no, I forgot one vacuum line. Ah, uh, no. There we go. Oh, it's juicing everywhere. Ugh. Okay. Important note on the bottom of the supercharger is this little union piece. I have a new one of these. We need to be mindful of this for when we go back together with it. We got this little dampening guy here. How many of these do you think get left out on supercharger reinstallations? And here, finally, we can actually see our PCV valve. You can see here's the two hoses left and right that run to both sides. This is another place where when you get to this point, go ahead and take some pictures, go ahead and take some videos so you can make sure, for example, this harness gets routed underneath this group of hoses and all the fuel lines and everything. We want to be real careful of these hoses right here. Don't yank on them too too much. Pull this one out. If you feel like it, you can go ahead and plug that up so a bunch of yuck doesn't get in there. We're going to be replacing it anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But if that makes you feel better, kind of the same thing with the manifold runners. Laying a towel over it is a good choice for you. Then I would recommend you go ahead and do it. Let's keep moving. We're going to start with our fuel line. For that, we're going to take off this little shield here on the passenger side in order to get to the fuel rail. We'll go ahead and loosen it at the high pressure fuel pump. You might get some fuel spooshing out on you, so be careful there. Oh, just a little spooshal. So if we follow our fuel line to our lower manifolds, which house our injectors, we'll find one fitting here and one fitting here. Now you wanna be careful when you're loosening the fitting that you don't loosen the little union that is on the rail. So I'm gonna counter hold one and loosen the silver one if I'm strong enough. 
I was. So same thing, we'll counter hold. The counter hold is a 19, the fuel line is a 17. Crack those babies loose. Then we'll take our T30 and remove the bolts that hold on that fuel line. By the way, what I just did there, you could hear the tool going and the bolt not coming off. I set my impact to tighten, just gave it a quick blip, set it to loosen, and it ran right out. Little trick, you gotta be super careful though, otherwise uh, you are going to end up breaking a bolt or some level of sad you don't really want. We also have a secondary air line that we need to remove that kind of runs on top of that fuel line. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea, old Chuck, to take that off first, but I didn't. So now we're going to. It's held in with a hose retainer right here. You can see this is the connector. This is another one of those kind of hoses that gets real sad real fast. And then there's the junction right here, just towards the passenger side of it. This is one of those squeezy junctions that you have to squeeze, but I'm gonna try and take it out of the retainer first, then squeeze it. So if we get a pick, we can just pop this latch out like that. Be careful with this. This is, man, I feel like I've said a hundred times, this is one of those hoses that sure to break. That's why we call them sure to break hoses. You can pull this out, just be real careful. Squeeze the tabs. There we go. Let me see if I can show you a little bit what I was doing. So here, here's that piece. There's a like a knurled or a textured piece, part of the this outer ring. You squeeze that together, it should open up. Now, I think we might be able to just leave this here and work around it. We'll loosen that side, loosen that side. Now we can go ahead and take our lower manifold off on the passenger side, or if you're doing the driver's side too, you can do both. So you have one, two, three, four, five T30s, two 10 millimeter nuts. Be prepared for when we go back together with this lower manifold, there are some special things we have to do to it. You'll also notice this bolt here is different. So we wanna make sure we pay attention to that. It's a longer bolt. See how that bolt is longer? Center section on the inner side of the manifold is where the long one goes. Before you take the lower manifolds off, it's not a bad idea to take these other dampers out and vacuum up any debris. What I'm doing is I'm just prying gently and kind of rocking it back and forth. You don't wanna pry real hard. This part here, the black part, is plastic. <laughs> Shocking. You know we have issues with plastic, right? <laughs> That's what got us here to begin with. You also wanna make sure we don't like bust an injector or something doofusy like that. There we go. That's almost as satisfying as taking the supercharger off. Oh yeah, slidey. Now remember, we have a connector and a vacuum line we're gonna have to undo, so we'll go ahead and pop the vacuum line off. One inject, two injectors came with. That's not bad at all. Should have enough room to get this up. Come on, baby. There we go. Now we can unplug it. And da 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 da. We also have the injectors, con injectors, connectors that we gotta undo because two of them came with us, came along for the ride. You can probably unplug them before you even take this off, but that'll just be up to you. Sometimes I like to play the odds and they'll all stay in. Also, mega important note. See that blue circle? Looks like a donut. That's an O-ring. We need to make sure we take this out and put a new one on that injector that stayed in. Look at how crusty those tips of the injectors are. Now, before we go any further, a couple of things. One, I've taken out some stuff along the back here that you don't need to do I only did it because I wanna show you guys a little bit better how to deal with the stuff at the back side of the engine in the V. We're gonna be extra careful with all of the things that we are going to be messing with from here on out. I'm gonna start by carefully moving the secondary airline. You will break this if you're not careful. <laughs> like, be ridiculously careful. We also have this stuff here. I'm gonna unclip this hose. I'm gonna unclip these and just move this whole thing out of our way. That will then allow me to get our fuel line completely out of the way. Moving back towards the back, this is the line that should go to our intake. Push this out of the way. That's gonna come off with our PCV. We have this group of connectors and vacuum lines. We're gonna kinda shove back out of the way too. Next, we are going to take off this Y pipe right here that goes to our PCV valve. One T20 torque screw. Make sure you don't drop this, because if you drop that, it's going to sad town. A little silicone, gently wiggle it out. We don't care too much about breaking the PCV valve, because we're replacing that 
but we don't want to break our hose. There we go. Gentle, 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 gentle. Set that crusty old guy to the side. Now, it's not uncommon when you take that off to actually have some coolant in it from our failed PCV valve. Next, we're gonna remove this coolant hose that runs to the back. There is a bolt right here. You can kind of see it, sort of. You see this knock sensor connector here, the green one? It's kind of between the knock sensor plug and the water pipe. It's gonna take a little bit of special attention in order to get out, a little silicone spray. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just slide these connectors a little bit to give us room to get a T30 in. Take a flat blade screwdriver, just nudge the brown one. You don't need to take it all the way out. And then kind of do the same thing with the green one. Be careful, you don't wanna destroy one of these. If you break this side, you're in it for a knock sensor. If you wanted to, you could undo the combi valve over here and that'll give you a little bit more room. You do have a little bit of flexibility in this hose, but not that much. So what I like is this little contraption right here with a T30 bit shoved through backwards. You also wanna be careful and not get your bolt pinched up against the hose. So break it loose, maybe get it by hand afterwards, and then definitely don't drop it. You're gonna be going down into the abyss, in the abyss of sadness. Once you get towards the end of the travel, if you wanted to grab a magnet, get it out the rest of the way, that's not a bad deal. There you go, right there. This is the coolant line that we're actually taking off. It's, it's in the car like this. Here is where that bolt we just removed lives. And as you can see, there's a fitting right here on the end that's held in with a clip. The clip snaps in to that spot right there. We need to undo that clip in order to get this hose out. We're gonna drop our 90 degree pick right near that green connector. Slide the clip down. And then separate the two hoses. Now we gotta wiggle wiggle our water pipe out. We don't have to take the secondary airline off, but, super butt, you gotta be insanely careful and if you do that, we can sneak it out. There is actually another bolt that holds this bracket in a little bit lower, but we have a little bit of room that we can finagle with. I found that if you pull it from the front a little bit, that gives you a little more room. Finagle this guy out of here. Ooh, ever so careful. Ugh, that was sketchy. Made me nervous. Initially, my plan was to leave this driver's side intake manifold on. If you wanna do that, you totally can. You'll have to take this fuel pressure sensor off, which is no big deal. It is a 27 millimeter. You need like a box rinse or something to get that out. I figured since I have the injector seals, we saw how trash the other injectors were. It's worth it. I'm right here. Let's go ahead and just get them cleaned up. That said, what I won't be doing is a decarb on this thing because I don't really want to. Remember the center one on the inner portion is longer. We'll get our mini persuader. I already unplugged it, so we don't need to worry about that. What did you do, my boy? Remember, we're persuading into plastic, and then we got the injectors to unplug as well. Come on, little baby. There she is. I feel like that one persuaded out more the easier than the other side did. Did all three injectors stay behind? I was like, oh, I'll take them all out so I can redo the injector seals. They all stayed in, that's okay. Now we got all the room we could dream of to take our PCV out. Let's go ahead and get this PCV out. Now you might lose a little bit of coolant when you unbolt this, but that's okay. We just wanna be mindful of that. And now we should be able to Lift this guy right up, right on out. Maybe, maybe, come on, there she goes. Oh, look at all that cooling inside that well. Initially going in, I was going to replace the thermostat while we were in here because it's right here and this is a really good overlap opportunity. However, it's definitely been off or replaced at some point. You can see there's actually a screw missing for this front plastic crossover pipe. And since I got a feeling that this whole engine is going to be coming out when we do the manual swap, we'll probably go ahead and do it then. Next, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this valley here. We wanna make sure the lower part is really clean. All the oil and coolant mixed together, any of these yucks, debris, let's get all that out of there with some brake parts cleaner and some shop towels or rags. A shop vac here or an extractor will help get some of the other yuck out of there. When it comes to the rest of the valley, not where the PCV valve is, it's up to you guys on how much you really want to do cleaning this. I'm not going to go crazy here and 
try and make it sparkly, but we'll just get as much debris out as we can. Also want to clean the mating surface for our PCV valve. Also not a bad idea to blow out these bolt holes with some compressed air to make sure that they don't have any water or cleaner or anything in them. Before we can put our new PCV valve on, we have to remove this bracket off of our old one and this hose right here. I was able to just pop this hose off with a screwdriver, but if you'd rather cut the clamp, I'm good with that too. Now we can go ahead and install our new freshy PCV valve. So what I'll do is I'll line up the PCV valve. Now before you go any further, get your bracket and set it in place. Start that T20. Now there are no threads cut in the plastic of this. It's gonna feel like you're cross threading it. Just make sure you get it straight. You'll be okay. I usually don't tighten that all the way until I get my PCV bolts started. That way you don't get the bracket crooked. Go ahead and drop your 14 bolts in. I usually start these by hand and then I'll come back and torque them, but the torque spec on these is only nine newton meters. Why nine, not 10? I don't know. We should stop asking crazy questions like that because that's an engineer decision. So you don't want to just send these home like a madman is kind of my point with that. Also like to work in a diagonal pattern with this. That way you don't get the housing under tension and then end up cracking it or stressing it and causing it to leak. And we'll go ahead and tighten to our nine newton meter. Why nine? Why not 10? Silly. Nine newton meter spec. Also, if you're concerned that I'm using an extension, don't be concerned. It's not gonna impact torque enough to make a difference here. We can go ahead and run our T20 in. And since we're right here, let's just go ahead and slide our vacuum line on to the Nurple right there, and then we can clip it right into its retainer. Next, we gotta do our coolant pipe. Remember, this is the one that kind of went here just under everything and around all the super fragile things that, you know, if you look at them wrong, they break. Here is the front port for our coolant pipe right next to our PCV. We wanna clean any yuck out of this. You also wanna be careful and not knock any of that crust into the cooling system. So get a pick and just kind of dig it out of there. We'll take some brake cleaner on a towel. See all that yuck that's in there? We wanna get that out of there. Two reasons, one, we don't wanna push it into the cooling system. And Two, we don't want it to catch our seal and cause a leak. This is a sad place to be. I like to take a little bit of dielectrical grease. Go ahead and luby lube that hole. This is the seal that goes into that part that we just cleaned. I'm gonna go ahead and put some dielectric luby on that one as well. Flip it around the other way, lube this side. This is what goes into that housing that we had to snap the clip into. With the utmost care and grace, and elegance. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this guy in real gentle like. Oh yeah. Oh, does, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Ha! I gotta tell you, that went better than I expected and now I shouldn't have said that because now I'm gonna be screwed. Speaking of screwed, let's go ahead and put that T30 in back here at the back of the bracket. I also had to push down a little bit on this coolant pipe just to get it started. So that's if you're struggling, that may be something that'll help. Or pull up on the bracket a little bit. Then once it's in enough, go ahead and snug it down and celebrate because this so far has kind of been the crustiest part of this whole job. Now we still have to get our other hose clipped back in, the one way back here at the back. You're probably not gonna be able to see this while you're doing it. This is what the end of the hose looks like. You need to line it up. You might need to rotate it to fit into place and you'll hear a distinct click. Then if you can, give it a bit of a tug. Let's see, right there. Yeah, that's our, that's our guy. Our guy's in. Couple of things once you get to water pump on, make sure that this connector for the injector has a little bit of wiggle so you can plug it in. While we're back at the back, let's go ahead and get this monstrosity installed. You'll notice there's two ports on PCV, but this side's blocked off and this is the only one that goes anywhere. I think this used to be just two separate pipes, which probably would have made this job a bit easier. If you have new seals, go ahead and put new seals on. Looks like there's two in each of them. I would also recommend cleaning this out, getting some of the carbon yuck that can build up in here. They also have coolant in here, so clean this baby out, spray through with some brake cleaner. I wanna lubricate these four seals, whether you replace them or not. Go ahead and dielectric them. Beep, beep. That'll help it install a little bit easier, less risk of pinching the seal. That's probably a little more than you needed there, Charles. Don't worry about doing anything to these ends just yet. This hose has to go over top. So we'll pull this up. We'll fish it around the oil filter. 
I'm not going to snap them in the valve cover yet. I'm going to get them installed in the home of which where they go. Might have to come back here and pull this clamp open a bit to fit it down in. Go ahead and just nurse that baby in there. You definitely want to make sure that the hose is fully seated in the housing before you put the screw in. You don't want to use the screw to draw the hose in. You risk breaking it. This is another one that has no threads. When you tighten it, you're basically cutting the threads. You're going into plastic too, so don't don't go to town on it. Snug. Here we go. Click or bzzz. Next up, we need to prep our manifolds to go back in, and we have a couple of things that we need to do to these, including this little floppity intake manifold gasket. But we're gonna start with resealing our injectors. Now, when we reseal these injectors, it's almost exactly the same as the two liters in most direct injection engines. An important note, we need to make sure we get that blue O-ring out of there. Walk the injector out. Be careful here, you don't wanna break your injector. Little pull and twist action. We also need our fuel injector seal kit with a bunch of tools in it that we'll probably never use. The most important ones are the three dies and the little cone right here. I'm gonna go through this quick if you wanna see a super in-depth step-by-step. I'll make sure to link that up for you. The kit we got from our man Poly D has some injector seals with it. I like to grab a fresh razor blade, cut the blue o-ring. Make sure you're not going like deep into the metal or anything when you cut these. The one that needs the most attention is this Teflon one down at the bottom. Go ahead and cut that. You're gonna want to spend a couple minutes cleaning these. Some brake cleaner or carb cleaner. This is gonna help our new seal go on a little bit better and maybe just maybe help our car perform a little better because the tip of our injector looks awful. Look at that. Ew. Put a new one on. Put a new o-ring on the end. That part's super simple. This part is a little trickier. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cone at the end of the injector like that. Take the seal, don't lube it, slide it on, grab the die, and just push that o-ring on. Like that, now it's all flobbly. We're gonna take our dies and we're gonna shrink it down a little bit. I usually wipe it off just with a dry towel. There we go, we're done. It's that simple, it'll take you like two minutes to do it once you've done it a couple times. Just put the little guy back on there. We're gonna lube this side up before we put it in the cylinder head. We're doing nothing with this side. Now if your injectors get left behind in the cylinder head and you wanna take them out and reseal them, grab the slide hammer tool that's in this kit, thread the end on, slide it under the injector, and gently slide hammer it out. You don't wanna go crazy here because you don't wanna break the injector and you also don't wanna send it flying. Next we're gonna deal with our lower intake manifold. These are the separator plates that I pulled out of each intake runner. I'm gonna clean these with this little scraper here. This works pretty good. These are also kind of thin metal, so don't smash down on them too hard. You don't want to bend it. We'll grab our brush here and we'll just scrape the rest off. Here's a little before and after action. These actually aren't even really all that bad. Make sure you clean all three of those. We're gonna get our manifold in here next. Do as much cleaning on this as you feel like you want to. We are gonna put some new seals on. You wanna clean the carbon out of here, you can do that. Just be careful, these are plastic. You don't want to uh, go to town with a bunch of wild, crazy, harmful chemicals. I like to keep the channels for the gasket as clean as I can. These orangey ones go on the bottom side, so this is the part that goes to the cylinder head. And these are specially formed, so they kind of go on one way. All six are going to be exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about a left and a right side. I went ahead and did the other manifold and everything. It's exactly the same as this one. The top ones are the green ones. These go between the lower manifold and the supercharger. Make sure they're seated all the way down. You don't want one sticking up. If it's sticking up, you run the risk of pinching it, so make sure it's seated all the way down. Then we'll take our clean plates, our manifold, and our injectors, and a vacuum pump over to the car. Take that back, I gotta clean these first. Then we're gonna take it all over there. First, make sure that you clean the mating surface for the intake manifold and the wells for the injectors. It's a perfect time to do a decarb if you're gonna go that route. We're gonna start by putting our little shields in first. The V goes down, so they go in the intake well just like that. You'll notice how these kind of stick up. That is important, because when we go back together with it, we gotta do something silly. Maybe not really silly, but we gotta do something to make sure that these sticking up like this isn't a problem. We'll put our injectors in next. Make sure they're clocked right and seated all the way. Next, I'll take a little dab of dielectric on each of the O-rings. This will help reduce the potential for pinching the O-ring when you put the lower manifold on. If you want to lube the well in the manifold, 
I'm cool with that. It doesn't need much. For our lower manifold, we have manifold flaps. You can see them right there. See those little flappy guys? We need to set these flappy guys into their proper position. If we just take this manifold and set it in and bolt it down, our flaps aren't going to open and close all the way. This is the vacuum actuator. When vacuum is applied, it pulls on that to open the flaps. You can hold it, install your manifold, Here's the key, torque the manifold and then let it go. And that'll position the flaps properly. The way the repair manual says to do it is to grab a vacuum actuator, pull vacuum, that's them open with vacuum applied. So if you do it this way with vacuum applied, it'll keep the flaps open and you don't have to worry about holding it. Make sure that your bottom gaskets are on correctly. For this side, it's probably gonna be easier to go ahead and plug in our injectors. Watch your harness so that we don't end up trying to pinch it. On the inside, you'll see these sleeves. That's what lines up with these studs right here where the 10 millimeter nuts go. Make sure your manifold is fully open. Go ahead and drop it down into place. Might not be a bad idea to plug your position sensor in too while you're here. I have it just sitting on here. If you take vacuum off or let it go here, your flaps are gonna snap and they're not gonna be positioned properly. So install the manifold with the flaps held open. This is why using a vacuum tool is nice because then you don't have to like balance trying to hold the flaps open while you're tightening everybody down. Get all your hardware on. Remember the different screw goes in the inner middle portion. Go ahead and snug your hardware. With the manifold held open still, torque these to nine newton meters. I'm tired of nine newton meters. Just make it 10, just go to 10. I don't think that's too crazy to ask for, is it? I heard of guys going through and doing this and snugging it down and then removing the vacuum or letting go of the manifold. And it actually will pop over that little tab and then you'll have manifold faults. Problem is you'll look down there and you're like, oh, that looks right. And then it won't be right. And you'll figure that out when you get the car running, you got intake manifold flat faults. And then you're like, oh, cool. I get to take it apart and do it again. And while this isn't a crazy hard job or anything, do you really wanna go back and do it a second time? I think not. So now when we remove vacuum, you can see the divider. When I remove vacuum, that's where the flap goes. If you don't pull vacuum, it'll get stuck on the left side of that flap. So you just saw me mount up this intake manifold. And if you've done this job before, you know what happened. If you haven't, I'm gonna show you. I made a boo-boo because it would have been a lot easier to get the fuel line staged before putting the manifold on. So if you're doing this in the right order, put your driver's side manifold on, lay your fuel line kind of in place, and then go ahead and put your passenger side fuel rail on. But I think we're gonna be able to sneak this without too much hassle. So we're gonna move our secondary airline out of the way. That connector there, then we're gonna have to unplug the runner flap sensor on the passenger side. So gently pry the tab with a screwdriver and just work that connector off. Be super careful you don't break it. This goes to show you that sometimes in DIY videos, things don't go perfect. I think a lot of times people just Cut that out. Well, here you go. We're leaving it in because this is the kind of thing that actually can happen. The important thing here is thinking through how do I get myself out of this kind of self-induced sadness. The reason that it's going to be easier to do this before the manifold on is this bend right here that goes to our high pressure fuel pump needs to go underneath our flap runner right here. I think we're gonna be able to sneak it in. So right here is that retainer for the secondary air. We're gonna pop this out. So this is kind of the part that goes here get our connectors up and over and then we're just gonna nurse this through between that bracket there and the intake runner sensor that actually was not that bad at all then go ahead and get your fuel rail in the ports on the left and the right bank get it set into the high pressure fuel pump and i normally just start the threads of these before i tighten anybody down so just get it just get it started that way if you have to move the fuel rail at all or do something like get this mount in the right spot like that. That way, if you gotta wiggle it around, you can wiggle it. Go ahead and tighten down those fuel rails. Something important to point out on these fittings, if they don't basically thread in super simple by hand, two things you should try. One, jiggle the fuel rail while you're snugging it up. That should take tension if tension's just in a weird spot. If that doesn't work and you're like, holy crap, this feels like it's tight already, you should stop. Make sure that it's not bound up or something goofy like that because you don't want to cross thread those brass fittings here and here, or even worse, in the high pressure fuel pump down here. These are fixable, but you don't want to find out you have a leak after you get supercharger on and the car running. Then before I do the final tighten down, I like to put my retainers in. 
Next, we are going to get this vacuum line of craziness all set in place. This one goes over the manifold. We have our retainers that will get in place. This one goes here. This side might be easier to plug in before you put your manifold on, but I didn't do that, so paying the price. <laughs> I'm paying the price a lot for my own stupidity today. If you're not sure you got those vacuum lines plugged in all the way, what you can do is grab this middle vac line, pull vacuum on it, and you should see right here and right here move, and then when you take vacuum off, they'll go back to their home spot. Things need to definitely be routed back where they go for this job, so this is why it was so important to take that picture. Next, we'll go ahead and get our secondary air pipe, put back where it goes. We, of course, have our bracket installed. Make sure you snap it in all the way. Next, we're gonna install this little fitting in our PCV valve. You'll notice there's that little tab there on the right. That actually lines up with a spot right here on the PCV valve. This is one of those reach around the corner type things. We wanna make sure we get it set where it'll go right into our supercharger. Went ahead and put a little dielectric on both of these seals. Probably best to go ahead and replace this fitting rather than just resealing it. May depend on mileage though. We'll go ahead and yeah, get that guy in there. That tab has to go in these grooves on the PCV valve, otherwise this is not gonna be clocked right. My next bit of advice is going to be going through and making sure everything is plugged in, everybody's tight, this is plugged in. The stuff that for when we put the supercharger on, we're not gonna be able to get to. And I wanna share exactly what happened for two reasons. One, I don't want you guys to make the mistake I just did. And two, I want you guys to see what happens when a tech screws something up or does something out of order. I mean, we already saw the fuel line, that was pretty easy to overcome, but these things do happen. So when you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up about it. It's normal and it happens. So what I had found is that this intake runner sensor, I forgot to plug in. So I was like, cool, no problem. I'll just find the connector, plug it in. I can get back to it behind it because the supercharger's not there. Well, I couldn't find the connector. So I searched and I searched and I went back to the first picture that I took right when the supercharger came off. And the wiring for it actually ran from this side bank, the passenger side bank, underneath the charger and into the sensor. So I was like, cool. Where the heck is that? Search, 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 I can't find it. Finally, I realized that over here, I had unplugged this harness and just thrown it out of the way, like back to the where the air filter would be. Well, what I realized, this plugs into the supercharger. This sensor actually goes here where the high pressure fuel pump is, right down here at the bottom. So I had this plugged in, it plugged right in no problem, but I should have had that plugged in and then this one goes up to the supercharger. So now I have to wind this wire with its connector back around in order to get it routed right and plugged in. And my she the sheathing on these are all old and crusty. That's not helping, but that's okay. We can fix that. Luckily, it wasn't too much of a headache. Look, these kind of things happen. And I think a lot of times people that make, make videos, they cut this stuff out. And I mean, I've done it too, right? Where there's not really any value of leaving the mistake in. But with stuff like this, it's so easy to do. I know that a lot of people really beat themselves up over things when they make mistakes. This is not a big deal. You just come back and look at it and go, ah, crap. Or, you know, maybe perhaps a more um, expressive term. You can use the term you want to use. So if this kind of stuff, it, it ends up happening to you, don't beat yourself up over it. Just fix it and move right along. This was probably a seven minute slowdown. So I'm going to get that plugged in. Then we're gonna get our supercharger on next. The other side I want you to think about here, if this happened now, this is why we take these short breaks and do inspections. This happening now is not a big deal. This happening when we're done and we pull faults and we have a fault for over here and a fault for this runner. And then we're like, oh crap. Or when we get it all put back together and we're like, oh, what's this connector down here for? That's a lot bigger deal. Before we get our supercharger installed, we have to put these little dampers in, our center one and the two side ones. We wanna make sure everything at the back is pushed out of the way so we don't set our supercharger down on something. And then we'll go ahead and lift the supercharger up and set it in place. Luckily, this has some studs that'll help line it up. You wanna try and set it down as evenly as possible so that that fitting at the very bottom sets into place nice and easy. I haven't mounted the supercharger yet. I wanna get this done first, just in case we gotta take some of this stuff back off. So our vacuum lines, the good thing about them, even though there's a bunch, is they kind of fall where they need to go, which is nice, like this one here 
you can see kind of routes down to the bottom. We have this little manifold bit right here that plugs into the three. So this is going to be source vacuum. We have this guy, which goes to the middle one. That's our runners. These two are formed real nice so that they only kind of go one spot. Now remember, I have this back piece off. Normally, this stuff sits about right here. Plug our solenoids in. This gray one is easy. This one goes here and this one goes here. This one goes to the one down below. We have to get our purge valve. This is another important component. We'll get this connector kind of kind of queued up, if you will. We'll plug our purge valve in. We'll mount it up on the bracket there and we'll make sure that's plugged in. Where's our, here's our connector for said purge valve. Now we got the stuff at the back we need to deal with. I can't say. This one plugs in back here. That connector, four pin, and it's right below the gray connector if you're having trouble seeing that. Make sure you get that good click too. This little guy goes up top. We'll make sure we stage that up there. We have our throttle body connector. We'll get that plugged in. We have our vacuum line routed right there. The other open vacuum line on that solenoid goes to what looks like our heater core lock off. This guy, this guy right here. He, this guy, he's the guy that that goes to. Next, let's go ahead and get our supercharger torqued down. We have six nuts that we're gonna torque to 20 Newton meters each. And I'm gonna go crisscross on this one as well, just to make sure we try and torque this thing down evenly. We now have a lot of little odds and ends things we need to put back. We'll start with our wire loom bracket on the driver's side. Tuck that into place. Our PCV hoses that go into the valve covers. Be really careful here. This is probably the worst time for one of these to break. Make sure you get the connectors plugged in on the supercharger and make sure you lock the tabs down. We have the metal bracket near our high pressure fuel pump. Before I put these coolant lines on over here, I like to get the belt on. That way you can have a little more room here. Go ahead and get your belt on all the rollers. Make sure it's on down at the crankshaft too. So I'll kind of loop it on my finger like this drop the tool down and then pull tension and just roll it on. Then what I always do with serpentine belts is I go back to each roller fully, whatever, make sure the belt is fully on so that you don't end up getting it half off on one of the lower ones. Next, we wanna put our coolant lines on and you really kinda of wanna do this as early as possible. That will give us the most amount of time to fill our cooling system up. Then don't forget your P30 on that bracket. Before we get crazy putting all the rest of the stuff back on, I wanna start with our cooling filling process. I'm gonna link up a better version of this funnel. What this does is it lets this be the highest level of coolant instead of this so it bubbles the air out a little bit faster. And then you can let this just fill up while you're doing the rest of your work. The newer version of this has a fitting that actually is the right thing for a Volkswagen. So this one is kind of makeshift. Well, that burbles down. Go ahead and put your intake back on. Hopefully you have a less janky intake than I have. I'm Captain Janky here with this intake. Maybe one day we'll put a better intake on this car. Hot take. We never will. I'm gonna put this guy on. Once you get everything put back on, make sure your coolant level is right. I also usually like to check faults at this point. Make sure that you have everything plugged back in and plugged back in in its right spot. You wanna make sure you test drive the vehicle really well after you're done. Keep in mind too, the first time you crank and start it, it might take a couple of times. Because we took that fuel line off, you'll have to rebuild up fuel pressure. I'll put links to everything we use down in the description. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time.